Welcome to Electron Online. So now let's do a simple example to show you how to actually run this Monte Carlo simulation. What we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out how many times you should throw a die before a 6 appears. Now logic says that if you have one six probability to throw any one of the six numbers that it would take about six throws on average before you get a six. Well, we ran the simulation, or I should say I ran the simulation, and this is how I went about it. First, you have to identify all the possible outcomes, and of course there are six possible outcomes to throwing a die. And then you have to figure out the probability for each of the six outcomes, and in this case it's easy, it's one-sixth of, a, of uh, the probability is one-sixth for each of the six outcomes. Then you have to come up with a means to generate a random number that simulates what the outcomes could be. And so you can take a random generator that produces a number from 1 to 0, and then if you ignore 7, 8, 9, and 0, then you only count it if you have a 1 through a 6. And of course, there's a 1 to 1 correspondence then. You then run the simulation until the 6 appears, and you count the number of times you have to run it until the 6 appeared, and you do that for 25 times. So run the simulation 25, and I guess I should have an S there. And then you need to graph or somehow tabulate the results. So this is what it looked like. Instead of using a random number generator, I used some dies, and that made it a lot faster. And so it turns out that the first time it took uh, six throws, then it took, uh, then it took one, then it took 11, then it took three, then it took 13, and so forth. And so when we did it 25 times, we summed up all the number of times that it took before a six appeared, and we took, that was 164 altogether for 25 tries for an average of 6.56, which is fairly close to what we'd expect, we'd expect about a 6. Hmm. But then when I went ahead and graphed it, I saw something that didn't look quite right. I had a lot of 1s and 2s and 3s. Yes, I did have a lot of 6s as well, but it was very spread out and it had a lot of numbers here. I would expect the graph to look a little bit more like this. That it would reach a maximum at the number you'd expect. Now, Two things could be the cause of that. First of all, I only ran the simulation 25 times. I probably should have run the simulation a thousand times, and then I probably would have had much more of a bell curve like that. Secondly, I used dies instead of an honest random number generator. And it could be that the dies, which came from some cheap games that I had at home, that they might not have been good dies, and so therefore the simulation would not be a proper simulation because a random number generator should indeed be a random number and if the dies aren't good dies and they show one number more than another then you would have a wrong distribution so that could have been the cause so then what I did instead was I did it a second time using two what I thought were better dies and I and then I got a better result so at least here it shows you what it looks like it's a perfectly good setup if the dice were good then I probably would have had a better distribution or if I ran the simulation many more times and at least at the very end I end up with a number after 25 uh, runs that was fairly close to the expected value anyway so it was in the end not a bad simulation but that is how we run Monte Carlo simulations in a simplistic version so you can see how it actually works and that is how it's done